We're just working on the Zoom share. Okay, um, so our team name is Open Prescribing Scotland and um, our goal or like our idea for this weekend was to um, basically set the ground stones for um, mimicking the Open Prescribing um, England a website for Scottish data. Um, so that included basically the scoping of the feasibility and the requirements to build such a Scottish version. version. Um, so our aim like besides talking about all the things that would be required um, was building like a prototype with basic functionality um, so that included accessing um, Scottish prescribing data um, inspecting inspecting the prescribing data um, like what what does it look like um, what is available um, how is it split um, also we uh, tried to perform some very basic data analysis um, which was massively reduced because we were only three, three and a half people today, unfortunately, after starting out with, I think, almost 10 yesterday. Um, we managed to create a very basic visualization for one of these analysis and um, deployed the web page. Um, and of course, we also uh, plan future requirements for the web application eventually. Um, so first of all, we access the data um, via the um, Open Data NHS API. Um, so it is all visible in the web page. And as you can see, there's like a green button on the right, which allows it to, um, to eventually use the API um, in Python to access the health board data that we use and also the prescription data. Of course, there's more data sets, but um, it's a start for, for proving um, that our web application does what we wanted to do. Um, so the current state is that we used a Django backend. Um, we had quite a big discussion at the beginning about um, which kind of framework to use. So should it be Django? Um, we had one participant that was um, that was thinking of Metabase. So first we thought of going into Metabase and then um, I think one of the parts why we decided to use Django in the end is because we uh, we found out that that's what's open prescribing England uses. Um, we were thinking that we might need um, API access and or a proper database in the end, and we wanted to allow us to stay um, flexible. And we also had a bit of Django experience in our team, which is why we went along with Django. Um, and right now we're accessing the prescribing data only via the API that I've. Um, just basically um, shown or mentioned. Um, so let's see how it now look like, looks like. Um, I hope you can all see this. Okay, so that's our very, very basic uh, prototype of a website, um, but at least you can now see something. Um, so we've, we've added like a, some very, very basic things to do. Um, one of the things is to include a visualization of um, the amounts of purchases of a certain drug for a certain health board um, in the year of 2022. Um, so for example, if we're choosing a drug here and um, a health board, we can wait a few seconds because um, it is quite some prescribing data that is going through um, and then get a chart. Um, we'll talk about limitations in the end for a bit, but I will also mention one here um, because one of the, the things that comes with using an API, or at least in our case, is that we only get access to a limited amount of rows. So this is not the full data. Um, and this also implies that in the future, we might not be able to use the API at all. and might have to like actually download the data and um, use databases. Um, which we didn't manage to include in this in this weekend. But yeah, this is just like a very simple histogram of the number of purchases for um, this kind of drug in 2022 um, for the health board that I've forgotten the name of. I think it was Airshine Allen, if I remember correctly. But yeah, that's, um, that's what the uh, website looks like right now. So if I go back um, to our presentation, maybe... 
Taslim can show us um, what we kind of envisioned like going forward with it. Um, yeah. Oh, okay. Um, hi. So um, since we had limitations and we couldn't finish what we had in mind, so we thought to share what we had in mind with you in a drawing format. So usually in software developing process, we call it a uh, wireframe. So uh, uh, it's kind of similar like what England have, but uh, we thought, uh, initially we thought that uh, Eng uh, the England website is has a lot of kind of unnecessary data and hard to understand data for uh, normal people. So um, we thought uh, to simple it down by uh, having a normal web page with maybe two options with the, which is uh, user can analyze by GP practice or area and they can analyze by drugs or something. So if you so if you click the analyze by GP practice, it will uh, take you to another page where you can select your uh, GP practice or area name. So in our in in this case, for uh, showing purpose, I just uh, put a random medical practice name there. So you can change them. Uh, there will be a drop down uh, buttons or something. So if you uh, click that button, it will show you the uh, generic data and um, the graph what we wanted to show. So the first graph is um, total amount of medicine prescribed by that, that particular practice. And the second graph is total cost per thousand patient for that particular, pra uh, particular practice. And uh, secondly, you can scroll down and you can choose the medicine type. And you can see um, uh, different medicine that was prescribed by that particular practice. And total cost for that particular disease prescribed by that uh, particular practice. So uh, we didn't add a lot of things here. So uh, we had in mind that if future developer can research around public that what, what else do they want to see from a specific practice or area, uh, they, they can add that. And if you go to the analysis by drugs part, you can see two buttons there, which will let you choose between generic medicine and uh, disease type. So if you choose generic medicine, it, it will take you to another page where you can check, uh, I mean, change the medicine type. In this case, I put paracetamol as a example. And if you click that, it will uh, let you show the total amount of paracetamol uh, prescribed by that region or area and total cost. And if you uh, go to the disease thing, uh, it will do the same thing, but in this case, it will um, change according to medicine. You can choose, um, choose the disease type and it will show all the medicinal data for any particular region or something. So that's what we had in mind, but we couldn't do it because of all of those limitations, <laughs> because of time limitations, because of team limitations. Since, uh, like, like Izzy said, we had a lot of enthusiast team member yesterday, but today. <laughs> so uh, it, it took a long time for us to get what we wanted to see because there were a lot of members and everyone has different opinion. So that's why maybe we didn't go further like we wanted to go. So, okay, and uh, we deployed the server in our, um, uh, we deployed the web page in our server. So Pog will describe you about that. Hi. Hi, everyone. I'm Park. Um, We have done a render deployment uh, for our older version. Like the newest version is not in GitHub yet. So we are doing the deployment action with using a previous version that is there. And so it's, the link is on the GitHub. Yeah, sure. Click this one. Yeah, it's, it's on render and the link is in the GitHub now. So, 
so everyone can access it. Um, using the current current version that we can choose, choose the is that is that this one? Thanks for the drugs. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. We this is like the drug data. <laughs> but I don't. I don't think. Yeah. It it this go to the API to get some data, but like it's, um, it's not. There's no this drug that we chose is not in the <laughs> rows that are in because the API limitation. Yeah, because of the API limitation, the drug that we chose is not there for us to view. But the uh, address part is working. Yeah. But the address part. Yeah. It, it, the address part we can search using the area code and show the uh, NHS area. Yeah, the name for it as using the API thing. So it kind of works. So there are limitations, for example, the API access, which is only available for like 100 rows of data um, per call where like one month of data has already have like 3000 rows of data and we can only access to that 100 every time that we call, we cannot access different rows. So that's a limitation. Another thing, the limitation is from the render deployments because we are using free version. If we are going to like download any database or download the data and save it in the database, that might be a scalability problem because uh, if the database is too large, it cannot run like efficiently and might lead to a lot of like loading time. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's our work. Thank you. Thank you, that look, that was good. Nice to see how you new ver the latest version be deployed, deployed <laughs> onto render with a with a fancy graph and everything if people want to stay on in hopefully half an hour when we pushed everything to git and hopefully we resolved any upcoming git issues potentially yeah that was great really really good um so i guess what happens to the project out the door this evening what's going to happen next It depends on if um, the Institute for Applied Health Sciences or the NHS wants to take up on this. I guess I think it's a it's a project really worth looking into because it's right. It's a, the data is available. Um, England has it. Why shouldn't Why shouldn't Scotland have it? I think it's a really great thing, and um, I think that's why initially, when um, yesterday, when there were a lot of people here, a lot of people chose this project because everyone was really enthusiastic about it, and I think. Um, we laid some good foundations and it's quite, um, I think, straightforward to build up on this in terms of data analysis and also in terms of deployment and uh, the Django project, and um, et cetera. Of course, people would have to look into building a database for the project instead of using the API access, but it's, I think the foundations are laid and I hope that someone will really take up on this project. Yeah, I was going to say that if you don't get any engagement from any organizations like NHS or the Institute for Applied Sciences, I'm sure Open Data Scotland and their community would be interested in getting involved. So I'll pass on some contact details for you for that. Yeah, that's great. Thanks. Anyone else? Thanks. Any other questions or comments? Nope. Okay. Thank you. Sorry, Bruce. Yeah, there's a separate one. Um, ah, right. That James. It was yeah, yeah okay. going. so i was just saying in, in, in the chat like ian um yeah good work lots of potential um but i think that potential needs to be directed in, in, in other areas too and the uh, three areas that came to mind number one fundamentally do these drugs work sorry did what work <laughs> well they we're prescribing all this medicine but does it actually work <laughs> is, it, is it actually curing disease or helping people so as a society, it doesn't look like it's 
doing much on the face of it and I think there is some meta studies but I mean that that aspect to the site you know yeah take meta form and it does actually make you have a better uh, life uh, than not taking it when you've got diabetes the second one would be the uh, connection with our local environment the water so if you have huge amounts of prescription data in certain locations you know uh, that is obviously getting uh, um, put into our uh, indirectly into our water system so that and then thirdly, I think you're, we're entering an era where more and more people are doing self-experimentation. And I think that's where the breakthroughs in health will come. So we need the base admin, but I think these three years and maybe others is, is, is the future of these sites rather than looking in the rear view mirror at the, at the uh, historical usage. Yeah, although all of those things come after the, the data becomes available or are more readily available, I guess. But yeah, good yeah. question, good point. Yeah. Thank you. Anyone else? All right, thank you. So on to the last team then, I guess.